Holy Week, Holy Questions. Each of our uh, services as we travel through this week, uh, we're going to let Scripture sort of pose a question to us. Uh, we heard tonight the text from 1 Corinthians where Paul gives us the text that more or less is the words of institution that we say during communion about the body of Christ and the blood of Christ in which Jesus tells us to do this in remembrance of him. And as I read that this week, I uh, realized that I had never asked, what does it mean to share this meal in remembrance of Jesus? Now, there's a kind of a quick theological answer to it um, in terms of how different traditions approach what happens at communion. Uh, Roman Catholics would say that the priest, uh, when the words of institution are said, turns the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. Uh, we would say uh, it is the body and blood of Christ. We don't have to figure out how that works. It's a mystery, and that's okay, but we trust that Jesus is fully present in the meal. But on the other end of the spectrum are traditions who would say Jesus isn't even there. He's gone and ascended into heaven, and that this literally is just a memorial meal that we do in remembrance of Jesus. And then I say, yeah, but what does it mean to do this in remembrance of Jesus? And so this week I found myself thinking about all the ways that we remember. And the first thing I thought about was taking tests when you're a little kid in school. And what are you taking a test for? To see if you remember the information that you got taught, right? So you're learning your addition and subtraction. Five plus five is 10, and then you take a test. Do you remember that piece of information? But it's not just tests. Uh, I have a number in my head, 739-4936. Anybody remember, know what that would be? The home phone that we had when I was a kid? Long gone, haven't had to call it for a very long time, but that is still up there because I did not have a smartphone that remembered people's names. If I was going to call home, I had to know what that number was, right? So you had to remember. Now, there's all kinds of information that we have to remember over time to just keep functioning through the world, and sometimes we forget, and it gets, right, that makes it more challenging. But we also remember more than just information. We remember um, things that we're supposed to do, right? Um, I forgot I was supposed to switch the laundry out or put out the trash cans. Uh, oh, I just remembered. I promised to do that for that person, And right? There's something of an action about that remembering that's different than the remembering that we do when we're just recalling information. Now, are we really great at always remembering the things we're supposed to do? No, not really. Um, and this is the thing, right, though? It's a different kind of remembering. And then there's a whole other kind of remembering uh, that I think is remembering. Um, I'm going to put together events and people. Um, there are certainly events that can, I mean, you can see a beautiful sunset in the mountains all by yourself and remember that. But uh, much of what we remember is the people in the world that we have encountered in lots of ways. And some of those memories can be super joyous memories, like of the day of our wedding or of the birth of our children. And some of those memories are terrible memories, uh, traumatic memories of awful things that happened to us. And as we remember those things, right, it can be hard to remember, it can be easy to remember, it, what was easy to remember can be hard to remember when there's been death and grief that carries along, and all of that can get wrapped up in that space. Now, each of those memory kind of things actually happen in the text of the gospel we heard tonight. Um, Jesus gives them a commandment, right? That's information. Uh, love one another as I have loved you. That's also kind of an action, though, right? It's something to do. Uh, but then the whole um, remembering of events things, like Jesus is getting ready to wash their feet and Peter's wanting to have a different kind of debate. And Jesus is like, you don't understand this now. But someday you will remember this and then it'll make sense. Same thing happens at the transfiguration. Jesus says, don't tell anybody about this until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. What Jesus is saying is this was amazing for you, yes, but it doesn't make any sense until I get raised from the dead, and then you'll go, oh, which tells us that how we remember can change over time. How we remember something today or how we remembered it before as we get older and wiser and have different things happen in life and other events come and go can change the way that we remember the things that happened a long time ago because we have a different interpretive lens that we bring to it. And so whether it's information that we're remembering, whether it's stuff we're supposed to do that we're remembering, or the events in life that have been joyous or struggles at remembering, all of that is backward facing. It's all something that looks at a time before now and recalls and remembers up to now. 
So if we ask the question, what is it that we're trying to do when we gather at this table in remembrance of Jesus? I think all of those things fit, right? When we come to this table, should we be remembering what Jesus taught us to do? Yes. And I think the reason Paul says this when he says it, if you read the whole 11th chapter of Corinthians, uh, it's basically him telling them they're doing communion wrong. And in particular, what they're doing wrong is they're excluding people from the table. Uh, there are people that are um, wealthy and have plenty of food and people that are going hungry. And he says, that's not the way this works. And he says, remember, and then he tells them the words of institution, right? Do this in remembrance of me. I think what he is telling them is when you gather around this table, remember that you're supposed to love and serve one another. Remember that Jesus is doing this for everybody. Remember, remember, remember all those things Jesus said to know and to do. And remember that he died, right? All of the events, all of the information, all of the actions comes to that table as something we're supposed to do in remembrance of Jesus. But I don't think that's the whole thing. Because I also think we remember forward. Remembering backward, right, is what has been. But we also, uh, because we have a God that is dragging us towards a future reconciliation of the whole creation, that's the promise, uh, on Easter, we'll hear a text from Isaiah 25 that says, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich foods and well-aged wines and will swallow up the shroud of death and wipe away the tears from every eyes. That sounds pretty amazing. Has that happened yet? No, so we can't remember backward to that. We have to remember forward to that. Now, has the death and resurrection of Jesus happened already? Yeah, yeah we remember backward to that, but we have to remember forward to the new heaven and the new earth and the new creation and all things being made new. So I think when we gather at this table, what we are really invited to do is both of those things. To remember backward to what we know from Jesus, what we've been taught, what we're called to do, and how God has shown up in our lives. But that can only take us so far. Because when we come to this table in a place of despair, or in a place of struggle, in a place of conflict, remembering backward might help us try to get our minds around it, but it's the hope that we get that comes from remembering forward to the promises of God. And when we remember forward to those, we come to this table with a little bit of a different posture that says this is what it's supposed to be. Everybody gathered here, everybody coming to the table, everybody welcome. And then we carry that memory forward out into the world with us, transformed by it, right? Because Jesus died and was raised to give us new life. And it's that memory of what that's going to look like that shapes our present day into something new and different. Now, when we go out here tonight, is everybody driving up down that road remembering forward to those same promises? Probably not. But that's okay, because we're invited to do that, trusting that somehow God's grace works through us and that to bring that future into the present now so that we don't have to just wait till we get there to experience it because it's already happening with Jesus in and among us today. Amen.